Where do you think grandmothers get so many sweets? I don't know a single grandmother who has not ever had some candy in her pocket. Looks like there is an endless supply there. Maybe that is why it is so easy for our grannies to share candies. For example, my granny hands me a tasty lollipop as soon as she enters our house. Then she goes to the living room, sits down on the chair or the sofa, and always asks me about my appetite. And I know beforehand what I should say. I should say that I am healthy and that my morning oatmeal was eaten without complaining. Then Granny smiles, puts her hand in her pocket and gets another tasty candy. I think that during the day she can get a hundred or more candies out of her pocket. And if the supplies in one pocket run out, another pocket for sure will come to the rescue. Earlier, I did not care about it at all. But recently, I keep thinking about a bottomless pocket full of sweets. My friends also said that their grannies seem to be the same. I have already checked out all the pockets in my clothes, but I have not found anything there except for some litter and a pine cone from last year. Then it came to my father's clothes. Luckily, he does not have a lot of them. Three shirts, two pairs of pants, a pair of jeans. It was an easy task. But I had a lot of trouble with my mother's clothes and it took me several days. On the first day, I checked out a large closet in her bedroom. I waited for my mother to go to the bathroom and immediately got to work. Afterwards, my parents got angry with me and asked me to never leave their things lying all over the room. On the second day, I searched every shelf in my mother's bedside table very carefully. And on the third day, I turned out the pockets of all the coats in the hall closet. I even checked a small pocket of my beloved teddy bear's jumper. But I didn't find anything. After that, I forgot about my searches for a while. But today, Granny has come to visit us again. I answered all the standard questions and got a piece of candy. After that, we both went to my room to play. We were playing with my new toys for a long time. A little while ago, my father presented me with a bright beach ball and soap bubbles. It was a gift for my good behavior. Granny and I blew bubbles, laughed, and touched them with our fingers to make them burst. We even played a little with the ball, though Father didn't allow me to do this indoors. And then Granny suggested I lie down on the bed while she read me a fairy tale. She was reading a fascinating story about Puss in Boots. I closed my eyes and imagined that I was a princess in that fairy tale world. 
I was riding in a golden coach to my castle and threw flowers out the window to every passerby. The passersby smiled at me, waved their hands, and said that I was very beautiful. And when I opened my eyes, I saw that Granny was sleeping. My parents had warned me that they would leave the house on business for a few hours. Therefore, Granny and I were all alone. I did not try to wake her and decided only to rest with her for a while. But suddenly, I remembered her magic pocket with sweets. I wanted so much to eat some candy, I couldn't stand it and put my hand in Granny's pocket. I don't remember what happened then. But I woke up on soft grass among strange trees. The trees looked strange because they were covered with bright green frosting. And instead of leaves, there were jelly beans on the branches. I immediately remembered the round small candies that my granny gave me. They were different colors and as bright as these trees. Believe it or not, I wasn't afraid at all, even though I didn't have the slightest idea where I was. Then I slowly got to my feet and looked around. I was in the center of a very big, amazing fairy tale city, and all of it was made only of sweet things. Marshmallow clouds were floating across the sky, and bright yellow butterflies were flying over the grass. Could it be that I got into Granny's pocket? That couldn't be true. That's how I found myself in that sweet world for the first time. I used to return there many times and explored everything backward and forward. Let's go to this sweet city together today. Don't be afraid. It's not dangerous at all. All you need to do is to close your eyes. And don't try to peek. If you follow all my instructions, you will get to this city for sure. Now, think about a tasty treat. Take a deep breath. You did it! Look around! It's great here, isn't it? On the left, there is the highest chocolate house. And on the right, you can see a fun fair. By the way, cotton candy and popcorn are completely free here. Now, let's run ahead for new adventures. But hold my hand tightly and don't leave me. Do you hear the waffle grass crunching under our feet? And the orange sun is warming up our skin so pleasantly. By the way, you may eat everything you see here. But go easy on it or you may have a stomach ache. When I arrived here the first time, I immediately started to eat everything greedily. And then I felt very bad. Let's go ahead. I've noticed that there's no such thing as bad weather here. I have never seen gusting wind and rain here. And at night, it is as warm as daytime in the city. 
We are in the Central Park now. It is evening already, so we don't have much time. And I'm dying to show you as many interesting places as possible. We are going past a milky lake. The amazing cookie fish are swimming in it. Look, they are jumping high above the milk and smiling at all passers-by. Do you like milk and cookies? I really love them. My mother gave me some advice to dip cookies in warm milk. That way they become even tastier. By the way, gingerbread people live in the city. Look, a gingerbread boy and his sugar dog are walking on the path. Do you see? The dog is so funny. I don't know about you, but I want a dog very much. I have been asking my parents about it for a long time, and they promise I'll get one for my fifth birthday. But only if I obey them and eat well. I will be five soon. I imagine walking in the park with my dog and throwing a milk bone for the dog to catch. We have almost arrived. Now we will leave the park and take a tram. We have to go past several stops and I will show you a large candy store. It seems to me that all the candies from all over the world are collected there. By the way, in this store, children can take any kind of candy for free, and as many as they want. And this is our tram. Do you have a ticket? Here you are. Any candy wrapper is considered a ticket here. Let's take this seat and look out the window. There is a toy store over there. The carefree lifestyle in this sweet city is very simple. First, you need to go to a candy store. There, you take sweets for free. Then, you quickly eat them and put candy wrappers in your pocket. Then, in the toy store, you use these candy wrappers to buy everything you want. It's great, isn't it? Adults have no idea about this trick. And there, on the left, you can see the fire department. In this city, any fire is extinguished with cherry juice. Even after the work is done, every fireman drinks a glass of cherry juice. So, we have arrived. Let's go to the door. Be careful, there are high steps. Give me your hand. The store is around the corner, right here. Come in and I will hold the door. But right here at the entrance, do not forget to take a waffle bucket in which to put your purchases. You cannot take two buckets, only one. Well, what do we have here? I'll probably take several strawberry candies. And this chocolate bear and a big pink cake. I strongly advise you to try vanilla ice cream. That one is decorated with a cherry. Now choose something else and I'll wait outside. Do not stay here too long. Wow! Well, you have a sweet tooth. We have enough of these sweets for the whole 
beautiful evening. Look, there are scooters by the wall. I'll pick the one I want, and you can have another one. I choose the blue one. And you? All that are left are red, green, and yellow ones. But don't take that orange bike. It's broken. Good choice. Now push off and go. If I remember the road correctly, then you and I will come directly to the beach of the Jelly Sea. Push off with your foot. All right, look. One, two, three. In the real world, I also have a scooter. Almost every evening, I take it outside with my mother and father. I ride the scooter around the house. There, I ride across the playground and then along the path to the park. Be careful! A little gingerbread girl is running ahead. Be quick to go around her. We have almost arrived. You see? There is the sea in the distance. And the air smells like raspberry jelly. Let's leave the scooters near the bench and go on foot the rest of the way. I really love coming to the beach and enjoying the sunset. In the sweet city, during sunset, the air smells not only like raspberries, but also oranges. It is so delicious. Once, my parents and I also went to the sea. We even took Grandmother with us. We walked barefoot on warm sand and swam in salty seawater. And every morning on the seashore, we saw jellyfish and crabs. In the afternoon, we hid from the hot sun under umbrellas and ate ice cream. It was great. Look, gingerbread people are coming to the beach. Maybe they also love watching the sunset. Even that boy with the sugar dog came. A tall man is playing the guitar. And over there, a girl is flying a kite. Let's sit down here on this wooden bench. You can take off your shoes and let your legs have a rest. Do you want a strawberry candy? I have one. Here you are. When the sun sets over the horizon, you will return to the real world. You will return to your warm bed. But never stop dreaming. And remember, if you ever become sad, or if you want to go with me to the sweet city again, you only need to ask your parents to turn on this fairy tale before going to bed, and I will always come to you. And now, close your eyes and go to sleep.